these uh, specialized here because uh, missiles do not have that. Rail guns do. Um, heavy weapons, I guess they would, but they're also going to have the damage intensity range. Intensity. So I guess what this is, is if you're in within a certain area, for instance, if you're within uh, the minimum or the maximum range, but outside of the optimum range, it's going to be one times the damage. But if you're um, inside of the optimum range, it'll be like 1.5 or 2 times the damage with heavy weapons on top of the uh, 2 times that you get automatically. So... Uh, but the drawback to that is that heavy weapons will be really expensive, and they'll take up two slots, two hard, two uh, heavy weapon bays. And when we enter, when we get actual ship power consumption in, it'll take a lot of power to use those. And that'll be the drawbacks to those, to using those weapons. Um, we may even say that you know using these weapons disables your ship for one turn or something, in return for being able to do just massive amounts of damage. Uh, intensity range, weapon gets uh, low, weapon gets the uh, high, count weapon. Had that wrong. Should have gone the uh, damage intensity min max range. Weapon damage intensity min max optimum range. Weapon gets low. I forgot to add in the second one of those. Stupid. Optimum high space KM and L. So I'm going to also add the KM here as well to both of these. Weapon damage type. Um, in use in a weapon spread, though, yeah, so if you, what will happen is that if you don't have enough energy in a weapon spread, um, in the future, the rest of the spread will not uh, execute. So you have to be mindful of that. So a lot of like a power consumption thing into here and all these later on. Uh, okay. Rail. That's all it is for right now for rail, I believe. There's no special uh, values. 
just yet. Okay. So now that we have that done, um, so if P choice equals yes, or PC choice equals yes, player care choice, um, So, what we need to do is also be able to choose the spread you want to use. Damn. We need to uh, create that as well. Oops. Um. So. P choice equals ship choose weapon spread. And we'll say um we'll have an if statement here with that. Hence S choose weapon spread. So there will be three spreads to choose from uh, now. We may add in the ability to add more later, and so we'll have to be able to modify this to to you know adjust to that. So, um, but for now, we'll just say uh, oh, we have that uh, we have that one. What's it called? Don't we? There's that value we created the. Uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, S weapon spreads. We'll use this value, we'll pass that to their S weapon spreads. That's how we'll tell. And what we'll do now is we'll actually do a for loop to create the list. So. Um, int uh, msg proc ship choose weapon spread int uh, ship weapon spreads for I equals zero. I is less than S uh, less than or equal to S weapon spread. I think it should be spreads, not spread. Yeah. Um, I plus plus. Counts uh, I plus one because I'll start on zero. Well, we'll say I one then. I equals one. I uh, let's see this then say weapon spread. I and then for each one it'll create a uh, menu option for that. Uh, we still have to oops, create because there's going to be a max number of spreads. Let's say the max number of spreads you can have will be eight. So. Um, K 
count count let's see please choose one of the following weapon spreads all right then we'll have that we'll do a count actually and I'll make a space there um, count All right, so now, um, so now what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to say, um, FP choice, is, So I'll have to say if P choice is less than I, if P choice is less than or equal to or is greater than is greater than I, or if P choice is greater than eight. Because we have to be able to catch each of those instances. So if P choice is less than one, or if p choice is greater than i, or I don't know, is greater than um, s weapon spreads, because i is going to change. Well, Technically, I would be this would be S weapon spreads, but we'll just use S weapon spreads since that's going to be static and we'll be probably less prone to having an issue. Um, or uh, P choice is greater than eight. So if the player chooses something less than one, or if the player chooses something that's greater than the current uh, SW spreads value, or um, if P choice chooses something greater than eight, which technically the spreads should should uh, deal with. Uh, it's true. Um, so now we don't need the last one. Then we're gonna say uh, R. Uh, MR message uh, 5. And then P choice 1 equals 1. Return P choice. Alright. So, back over here now, we have to deal with the uh, return value there. So, um, let's say, let's do another while here. While not B continue. So set B continue to false. That should also be false there, I believe. If P choice equals equals one. Then we say if uh, what the hell did I call these? Uh, 
We'll have them, but not all of them will be accessible. Let's do it that way. We'll hard cut it so that it's not, they won't be accessible unless uh, this value is correct. This is the correct value there. Let's just start out with having three available. So if this is to make sure to check if the uh, uh, see if the weapon spreads already have something in them. If they do, then it's going to ask if you're sure you want to overwrite. And if you say no, it'll uh, go back there and ask you for another to choose another spread. Um, so if SW spread, then the number. Dot size is greater than zero. See so if I will just take this and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Then we'll add a new message. Weapon spread contains information. Do you wish? to over rent. Actually now well, I'm not sure if we'll add it there or not, but for right now we'll just make a new uh uh int or care ship weapon uh, overwrite spread and we'll just copy one of the uh, other character ones here Weapon, or it should be O W spread, overwrite weapon spread. should print out the values of the vector just to show you what uh, show the player what weapons are actually in the spread uh, I'll think about how if I want to do that or not and um, see here let's see what's where we were and uh, I'll get back to you later when I uh, start this back up I'm gonna go and take a uh, break, maybe do some Nomori recording, or maybe finish off Assassin's Creed, but uh, I'm going to go and take a couple hour break here. Alright everyone, we're back to finish this off. Took a very huge long break, mostly because I played uh, quite a bit of Nomoria, but it's actually 2.32 a.m. now, <laughs> as opposed to whatever it was when I stopped uh, earlier. I think it's microphone to actually pick up my voice properly now. Um, so, uh, there's a huge here, here. Let's see if I can remember what the hell I was actually trying to do with it. Um, so, 
Overwrite this weapon spread. Blah blah blah. Uh. So. Turn P choice. Okay, so I guess we go back to ship. So, ah, that's right, we choose one of these. You know, we could just do all of this quite easily. You know how? I don't know why I didn't think of it before. We could just do ORs. What the hell? Why don't we just do that? Instead of making all these freaking if statements. And using up all this code line, you know, code space, just screw that and put in ORs. Ridiculous. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. This is another uh, truth about coding is that you'll go through, do things, come back later and see what you've done and realize, wait a second, why the hell didn't I think of this before? I think you've seen several of those moments watching this uh, huge ass developers vlog series that we got, or developer vlog edition we're going on here. I, I really have no clue how long this developers vlog is going to be. Um, I'll, it'll probably be the only one that we have that is this long. <laughs> I just wanted to go through and show you the actual lengths of the development process of a game or any software using a traditional, well semi-traditional way of actually writing the program. Was it the last one? Yes, it was. Okay, so... No, it wasn't. There should be an 8, right? That's all. Oh, there's an 8. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um, then I'm going to call menu uh, dot ship overwrite weapon spread. And... Uh, so... Oops, crap. So I'm going to go, uh... PC choice equals that. Okay, and now, uh... If... P... C... C... PC choice equals equals y or is equals capital Y say B continue equals true else uh, nothing. So, P choice again. So, what's the uh, what are the other ones then? Um, C W spread. What are the options? Uh, ah, I see. Please choose one of the following weapon spreads. Gotcha. So we'll say if P choice is greater than or equal to 1, or if P choice is less than or equal to 8, do this, because that'll include everything. And so I won't even have, so this, this is like a double cover, if you will. Instead of having to do all the P choices, we just say, okay, if it's within the range that it can be, and if the, and if, uh, Also, here, here's the thing, though. We want to... Ah, uh, it's true. Hmm. 
The problem here is that each choice corresponds to a specific weapon spread. And that's the problem. So, uh, the re it's not going to be possible to do it this way. But there is a way to limit it by saying, uh, by doing ands instead. So, we'd only have 8 instead of 16 because we have to say if and then another if after that. So we just say p choice if uh, equals 1 and and um, if this is greater than 0, do that if statement. We'll see, backspace it. Um, <coughs> we need another one to turn it. Close that off. Okay, um, so we do else if, else if P choice. Well, actually, we'll just do uh, else if and then add in the rest of this. Just do it that way. Let's just add it in and then add in the else. <coughs> I knew that one was coming. Excuse me. Uh, else if. P choice equals 2 and spread 2. And now what we'll just do is copy this and paste it a bunch of times. There's probably an easier way to do it, but sue me if I can't figure it out. And again, it's after one, so my thinking skills are a little bit dulled. But I don't think there's a way to do it without the way, do it the way that I want to have it done without actually doing it this way. Um, even this way, it saves some code space, but there is still some code, uh, extra code. For instance, all these if statements that we have to use. But, shouldn't matter too much. Uh, da -da -da -da. So now we have to go through and change these to their appropriate values. 4, 4, 5, cinco, seis, 6, 7, Seven, Hachi, eight, and actually we have a few too many. Then actually we have two too many. All right, so whoops. So we have one each one here for if. Um, there are particular, uh, spread is filled, uh, to ask the player if they in fact really want to override it or not. Um, again, as I mentioned before, I might add in a little bit later on the ability to print out what weapons are already in the array, or sorry, in the spread. But for now, let's leave it like this. Um... So that's all good. After we get out of here, though, which is going to be this one, I believe. Let's say continue back to false. Because it's used elsewhere. Um, so. Wait, this is 27. We used 27 on the other one. Should have been 28. Let's see what is going on up here. So we're sorry that choice is not valid. Okay, so now we'll need to create a new one. Call it um, canceling 
weapon spread creation. And change this to nine. So wait, no, I think I've got some of these wrong here. Go to, go down here, start all down here. This should be 28. Or 9, rather. This should be 28, uh, wherever this one is. This one's correct. I believe. Here. Yeah, no, 20, so this is 9, 8, 7, so it's actually 6. Uh, 7 is the one we use over there uh, in the uh, ship class, so this is actually 27. No, that's not right either, damn it. Um, so nine, eight, seven, six, so does six, okay. And then seven is, that's right, okay. And we have that uh, thing here, where was it? I was just looking at it, damn it, where'd it go there? So yeah, it's 20, actually it's right there, no, it's 27. <coughs> I believe, anyway, I don't know, let's see. Um, yeah. Or wait, 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 this is not right. Um, seven, this is actually all 27, that's, what, that's the mistake I made. 26 should be the, uh, yeah, where did I put that one at? Did I put it up here? Above all this stuff? No. S menu. Where is that? Didn't I make a menu thing to uh, select targets? Oh no, wait. That's done from the battle processing. That's right. Yeah, there it is. Twenty six. That's right then. Okay, uh, back over here. So uh, we got that fixed now. Not sure what those are for. So, if uh, there are no weapons installed, don't do anything. Else, if there are weapons installed, do this stuff. So, um, alright. Crap. So how does this work again now, the selection? Um, I want to make sure all my other stuff is sound, because there seems to have been some issues. So, uh, okay, so count one laser. Ah. Okay, so those only just send the size of the uh, hard point vectors, gotcha. That's all those do, okay. So it's kind of hard to miss that one up. Unless it's in there, which I said was going to be a pretty... pretty much a kill zone for bugs, if there were any. And that that whole thing there would be... that would be the most complex area that they could happen in. So, um... Okay, so we've uh, determined which uh, weapon spread to use, or rather, not which one to use, but if it's full or not, and determining that. And then we have to then say, okay, um, we have to set the current weapon spread to be used, the current vector to be used. Um, that, how do we do this, though? Um, 
I guess we could use like a, a integer to say, okay, we use this weapon spread. That could work. I was thinking about maybe storing it inside of another vector, but I think that'd be a little too insane. So instead we'll just say um, int ship current uh, spread. Current, I guess current weapon spread. And I'll just be an int between 1 and 8. So... Uh, ship current weapon spread equals one. I missed the D. We'll just add this to each of these now. And change the value to whatever one we need it to be at. Uh, four. And the beauty of this is that it's only ever going to be whatever value if you have that weapon spread activated. So there's no extra checking or anything that has to be done. You can only choose these values if you have those weapon spreads open. Which I think is accomplished through here. Somehow, um, yeah, weapon spreads. Sure, it might just seem like oh, I'm adding needless complication, but um, there has to be a way to di you know to differentiate each individual spread from each other as far as which one's currently being used to create a weapon spread with. Um, there might be easier ways to do it, but like I said, at the moment this is the best way I can think of. We'll probably come up with something else later on, but that's the beauty of coding is that it's easy to fix things. There was a, I had a discussion question today and with class about how architecture and programming were similar or different and one of the differences with architecture is that if you build something and you don't like how it is it takes a hell of a lot of time and money to fix it. With coding all you gotta do is highlight the spot you want to get rid of and backspace it into hell or delete it into hell. And recode. Not that much time or energy needed at all. Well I guess that depends on how complex the thing is that you're, or how large, the, large and complex the thing you're replacing is. Okay, so now that's set up. Um, so... P-choice. Uh, Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to say... So we're, what we're doing is we're sending the specific, uh, a specific a pointer to the specific weapon that's uh, at I at that point in time. So we can just use I to add it into the uh, the uh, the uh, you know array or vector for that spread uh, the spread vector with that. So if you say yes to choose it, uh, then. We have to say, um, uh, crap, what is it? Pushback, but it's, um, what's the, oh, uh, SW spread one. Or, well, uh, let's see, that's a problem. How do you determine? Hmm. There's another problem. So we'd have to have an if statement to determine which one it is, which yeah, spread it is. So that's not going to work properly. What if we did this? What if we used what we have here? And the actual adding of the stuff would happen in another function where we would send the current, we'd have a current uh, 
a current vector that would be used to store the information temporarily, and then that would be sent to another function with a you know if statement or switch statement where we would go through and find the correct uh, spread and add that information in. An intermediary, if you will, for that information. I think that's what we'll do. Um... <clears throat> but that's going to add another level of complexity to it. Well, no, it won't add to this, but to the to the class itself, yeah. But nothing we can do about that. Um, so up here we need to add in one more so vector uh, hard point and say ship um, temporary weapon spread uh, hold data temporarily for insertment into a spread vector and then we'll use uh, use a uh, void here and call it, um, well, we have a create spread vector, or uh, create weapon spread, but at the same time, we could just put it at the end of that or something, I guess. We don't need to create a whole other thing for it. We'll just add it to the end of that particular, add to the end of this, or somewhere in here. Well, see the thing about the, the thing about putting it inside of a. Well, we could put it. We could say, hmm. So we add the information here. We go through all this. We add the information into the the temporary vector. Uh, and then after this is done, we come down here and add it to the actual vector. I guess we do it that way. Um. That would work. So, what I need to say is then. Uh, ship uh, let's change the name let's change it to we had C no TW we did we did have TW temporary weapon spread STW spread dot uh, dot push back um Hard point weapon type would be a laser, and then uh, the weapon ID, or no, the we web slot, the slot ID for the uh, specific weapon would be. Damn. Um, I guess we just say uh, I tier. We'll add another variable that we can increment through this process for slot numbers. Or no, it has to be the weapon slot that the weapon actually has at the moment. Uh, crap! Is it hard, the specific hard point that has that information? It must be. So. Hard points. Really? Well, what the hell? It should. God, I don't know if I missed that. I'll add that in now. Hard point, and then we'll add another constructor. Um, string uh, weapon type and int slot. We won't use these. Uh, well, no, we have to have those for the uh, other hardpoint uh, subclasses. Uh, so 
Now let's add that other one in here, so hard point. String weapon type int slot. And then uh, hard point. What are the uh, uh, things for the sets? HP W type. Okay, yes, HP W type. P W type equals W type. And HP slot equals slot. Okay. Um, so now we need to pull that information though from the weapon itself, from the weapon slot itself. Uh, I believe that's where it comes from. So how to do that? Uh, I guess we go lbanks dot at i dot uh, get you know the thing. So lbanks dot at i dot get slot. STW spread. He or what? Oh, it's CT. Crap. I made a typo. And didn't catch it. Okay, that fixes it. Uh, I think we need another one or something. Yeah, there we go. All the parentheses. Crazy. Okay, so that adds that. Um, so that's that specific uh, laser weapon with the slot it is in the laser banks to here. And so then we can call that back, see the slot number, see it's a laser, and then look it up inside of this uh, vector here to use to fire with. Um, now, once that's done, we have to break the case. We have to break the for loop. And then we have to break the case, but not the while loop. Um, the question is: is how how do we how do we break this while loop now? Um, I guess we can say, let's go over back over to the the thing here. And say, if i equals, equals sw spreads, um, add a count. problem here is that, well, we'll say zero, because zero won't ever be an, a number that's given, so if it's zero, we know that, that we want to, uh, so we'll say zero, um, stop, uh, say done editing this, or done creating this uh, weapon spread. And I'll so I'll say if less than zero, since we'll have zero in there now, and then back over here we'll add in uh, case zero. We'll just say um, couch completing weapon spread creation. And then we'll break 
from here and also then b continue equals true. Okay, so we break out of the for loop, then we need to break through the case. And we gotta do this for each case now. Except it's gonna be uh, M turrets this time. M turrets and M selection missile. M turrets And then heavy weapons. <clears throat> Heavy HW base. <clears throat> okay. So that breaks the cases, um, but doesn't actually stop until the player chooses to. Another thing we have to make sure, though, is that the player is not, um, reusing a weapon. We need to make sure the player doesn't do that. So, we have to do this as an else. First, we have to check to make sure the player isn't reusing it. And, um,. Actually, we'll do it. It'll be a double nested for loop. So we'll have uh, four i two equals zero. Oops. Do we not have an i two? Well, why the hell not if we don't? Do we even have an, even have an i defined? If not, then where the hell do they get to find it? Did we even have one, period? Have a for loop anywhere, period? Yeah, we have an eye here. Where is it to find it, though? Oh, God. Ah, uh, no wonder I couldn't find it. It's defined globally. I and I, too. Okay, no problem there. Back down. Uh, I2 is less than, or there's less than L banks dot size. No. It's less than uh, ship T uh, weapon spread dot size. 
I2 plus plus. So I want to say How do we want to deal with this? So we want to make sure that this specific weapon has not yet been used. Um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that... Uh, well, let's just do the code for having to make sure it's not been used, and we'll figure out the other part later. So I want to make sure... Cycle through each, and we're going to say if... Um, If uh, S T W spread dot um, at I two dot uh, get weapon type. Whoops, get HP weapon type. Really? Oh, because we don't have the other. So that's why we don't have that yet. Equals equals. Um, so I guess in this case it'd be laser. However, I guess later on we'd have. Well, do these have their own weapon types? The weapons. A string that has a what their weapon types in them. If it does, then we don't need to set those. We can just pull that from there. Uh, no, it's an int weapon type, not a string. Um, mm. Well, I guess we could change it to an int later on. Won't be that hard. Just have to change a couple things. And it's going to be an and, because we want to make sure that the weapon type and the slot match. And and. STW spread dot at I two dot get slot equals equals um, L banks dot at I dot HP weapon or HP dot get HP slot counts this weapon has already been included in this weapon spread please choose a different weapon okay so now if this happens We want to break out of this one. We also want to set some sort of uh, flag for this to catch, or to be uh, compared against, so that we can use this uh, flag here. Really? How's that? Oh, we need another one of these, that's why. Duh. 
Um, so set uh, it'll be a bool, obviously. So I'll say bool. We'll have to go through and reorganize everything once we're done. But bool um, b weapon is already used. That'll be a good one. I think that's pretty good. So b weapon is already used equals true. So if this is true, so if if um, b weapon is already used is true, then we say i minus equals one to roll back on the eyes. Well, push this, um, No, we don't want to do that. We just want to continue to a different one. So we'll just say, um, we'll add it to this as an and and, and change this to not. So if weapon is not already used and and the player choice is yes, then add it to the. Uh, Temporary weapon spread. If either of these, if this is incorrect, if this is, however, if this is, uh, if this is still true, what it's asking, you know, indicating here, but the player's choice is no, then we just skip it. Or if the weapon's already used, skip it altogether. Um. Okay. So in this way, you can only have the same number of you only have uh, the number of weapons in a weapon spread equal to the number of weapons you own. In other words, you can't add your one weapon twice, you know, or the same weapon twice. Um, there's no hard coded, you know, variables or anything like that. It's all based on how many weapons you actually have equipped. Uh, that is a hell of a complicated case there. So case one. Okay, now we have to mold, uh, just damn it, we have to do <laughs> have to add all this to all the other ones down too. Went ahead too quickly and added the rest of them in. Uh, we'll just do this all the way down to the break, or from the four down to the break, so we don't have to worry about all that other crap. And then just copy paste it over it. And just modify everything we need to. Okay, so. Uh, now that's just be just to do it. This way. Mounts. Uh, is that everything we need to change on those? 
Oh, right here, this too. Duh. Rail. Forgot all about that. Or rather, missed it and didn't forget about it. Uh, here it is, missile. Okay, and then HW base. Heavy. H. Um, heavy. All right. So now, after all that is done and over with. And the user is is true. Well, the user will have to say true because well, this happens. To keep looping through and saying, "Oh, we can't use it. Choose a different one." And that's what will happen. Um, I don't want to have to figure out a way to to you know check every weapon hardpoint uh, vector against this one to see if they've used all the weapons up or not. We'll just have the user say, "You know what? If you want to continue playing the game, you have to say once you put all the weapons in." that you want to stop editing the stupid thing. Otherwise, you can just stay there and keep doing it forever. Um, but okay, so... Uh, let's see, where is the... I need to find the close-off curly brace for the while. There it is right there. Cool. Good. Now, we need to add all this into the... So, uh, here's what we do. Four. Um, I equals zero. I is less than or equal to. It should be less than or equal to because, well... No, less than, yeah. Less than. Uh, less than... Chip TW spread dot size um, I plus plus. Then we're going to say um, switch. Uh, SCW spread. So, case one. Um, Weapon spread one dot at or dot pushback. Uh, STW spread dot at I. And then obviously break. And that's how those will be uh, formatted. So one for each of these uh, cases here. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, uh, six. Seven, eight. Okay. Of course, I'm going to need to add this, change these into here. Change these into the ones they need to be, rather. Uh, so they line up properly. 
Okay, and that's how it'll, that's how it'll be done. And then close off that switch. And then close off the four. Alright, so that does it really. I think that actually does do it. That finishes it off. Um, that's a hell of a thing. 384 to... So almost 300 lines of code, but that's what it takes to do this. At least as far as I can tell for now. That's probably less than next. I'm including the white space too. It's probably closer to like uh, 250 or so. 270, somewhere in there. Still a lot of white space. Um, are there any other while loops we have to deal with? There's an if else uh, while that's already taken care of. I think they're down here. Yeah. So we're not inside of a while loop by that point. Good. And down to find out, but there's probably going to be a lot of bugs with that. I mean, not a lot of them, but some. I'm I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least more than at least five or six bugs. Um, it's a pretty complex piece of code there. Multiple while if while for loop and. Uh, switch statements all contained within each other. <coughs> so that's great weapon spread function. Um, what were we working? So that was that. Uh, so battle P choice. As far as okay, so. So we need to now do a case here where we <coughs> are able to pick a spread to use. I may even add a you know naming function to uh, the hardpoint class that those uh, spreads are made of, so you can name them what you want. Instead of just saying weapon spread one, two, three, name them, you know, specific things so you know what they're for. Um, but uh, we need to figure out a way to call them for use. So uh damn. I think I'll just have to we'll just have to stop here and I'll have to think about it because we probably will have to send a pointer or something through or actually send the entire uh vector through the to the function in order to do that. But uh it's doable. But I'll have to think about if I want to do it that way or some other way. Plus it's probably a good time to stop it's after three. It's actually almost three thirty. So the coding problems are just gonna start compounding. But thanks for watching uh, the videos from today's developer's vlog recording session. Um, I really have no clue when this is going to end. I might not even it might not even be done with it by the time you know, end of February rolls around. I'm not sure. I'm hoping I will because that will mean that I'll actually possibly have a playable version of the game, or at least a game a version of the game that I can play to debug, if nothing else. But um, it's actually been an interesting process doing the the whole, you know, coding it in this fashion I'm doing, trying to get things actually working to test them. Uh, I've actually had so much, I've had crap loads more progress than I've had for a hell of a long time, really. I think since before, the only amount of progress, time I made this much progress was when I was actually first writing the game back in 2007, uh, the uh, very first versions of the game. Uh, I wrote like 150,000 codes in about, I think it was eight weeks is how long we had. Yeah, eight weeks. 
Uh, I haven't written that much code since then. Not even a fraction of that in that amount of time. But I might actually get to uh, somewhere close to maybe a quarter of that uh, from all this that we're working on. But uh, it's been interesting. It's also it's been really good to uh, get me interested in actually working on it because it's something I'm doing something new, and so it's a little more interesting to do it this way. But thanks for sticking with me and uh, putting up with all the huge long uh, videos and all the kind of boring stuff in between when I'm trying to figure out how to get stuff to work. But um, I would appreciate it though if you liked the videos, if you'd uh, vote them up, upvote them. Uh, I'd also appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. And as with our other recent videos, I'm going to urge you, if you have not yet done so, to vote in our viewer's choice poll. Um, we've had lots of uh, participation already, but even more participation would be awesome. So, uh, it's Jubal, and I'll see you, if not tomorrow, then sometime later in the week.